You've heard it before, be authentic. It's one of the rules of creating good videos. But what if your version of authentic isn't the same as someone else's version of authentic? How do you show up confidently? Welcome to Show Up and Be Seen. I'm Valerie McTavish here with insights and inspirations to help you get visible so you can increase your impact and grow your business. Joining me on the show today is Tracy Steen. I'm super excited. I've been working with Tracy for a long time, on and off, and um, the results that she's gotten from her video uh, career have been amazing. So welcome to the show, Tracy. Thanks. I'm so happy to be here and share some of my experiences. So Tracy has a YouTube channel and she is a personal trainer. She's helping people get fit. Uh, and it is one of the things that she's been passionate about for, oh God, how long has it been, Tracy? Well, I've, I've probably 13, 14 years in the fitness industry, but really online about the last four years for sure. So let's go back to you getting online and knowing that video was a big piece of you getting online. Why was it important for you to get visible and show up for your business? One of the best pieces of advice that one of my friends who's an entrepreneur gave to me said, he said, you don't want to be one on one. I mean, you're basically, if you train one person in one hour, you're getting a certain amount of money for that one person. But if you can be one to thousands or one to millions, now you've expanded your reach. And that always stuck in my head. I just thought, how do I do that? I'm going to have to figure out a way to be one to thousands. And video is such a great way to do that because you can, you can teach, you can train, you can coach. And you know, the opportunity for thousands of people to see it now online is so great. Anyone can do that. Yeah. And, and so you started out with a YouTube channel. And of course, the trick is the YouTube channel alone isn't enough. You have to also promote that YouTube channel. Yeah. And that takes a different kind of skill set, right? I mean, you have to promote this yeah. piece of content that you've created, which is in your comfort zone, right? Creating yeah. workout videos. Sure. But then you've got to promote those. So what was the biggest challenge you faced in getting visible to promote your channel? Yeah, not in my comfort zone was the promotion part for sure, which is like hiring you was helpful for that. You really have to increase your skill in marketing and knowledge of that. One of the first books that I read that was so helpful for me uh, was Seth Godin's book, um, Purple Cow, and, and really sort of honing in on the fact that there needs to be something authentic and unique about you, about your business, about what you can bring and what problem you can solve differently, uh, that people are going to click on it. I mean, they're inundated, right? So, so my first thing that I had to do was really educate my, myself. And I spent months, maybe a full year, actually watching YouTube videos on how to make good content. Um, I was in your mastermind group, so that was helpful for feedback on what step is next and what to learn next. I think that, you know, there's, there's just a lot to know and, and people, just kind of stop as soon as they start because they get overwhelmed by it. But there could be step to step by step processing of learning and, and, you know, you could get your video out and be successful. Well, the other side of that though, is that people learn and learn and learn and learn, and they use that as a form of procrastination from actually yeah. getting visible. Right? So how did you stop that pattern? How did you say, okay, I've learned well, enough and now I just have to do the thing. Like what was, what was the biggest challenge? for actually taking all that knowledge and all that learning and showing up. I wanted to make money. <laughs> I had no choice. I was, especially when the pandemic hit, um, I was already sort of set up online, but I really, like I had no clients. I couldn't go to their home. So my, one of my big driving factors was to make money and have impact in a larger scale than I had had. I knew I, my content and who I was and how I approached fitness, wellness, and nutrition was having an impact. So it's like, now how do I scale that? Um, but yeah, it's at first I look back at my videos and they're horrible, but I put them out. I think I was proud of them. Even back then I was like, these are actually good. But looking back now you're like, Oh, but that's exactly how you do it. You, you know, I, I just gave this illustration to my members this morning. It's like planting a seed in a pot. You, if you plant it and then you water it and cultivate it and give it water and food and chlorophyll, it's going to grow. You don't know how it's going to grow. You don't know how, you know, it's going to extend. You don't know how deep the roots are going to grow, but it's going to grow and it's going to flourish if you follow the process. 
And so part of it was just trusting the process. And I know you said this a lot is just like, you've got to just stay in the pocket and do the work, right? Yeah. You know, the and content, right? Exactly. Yeah. And remember that it doesn't have to be perfect. You, you have yeah. to plant the seed if you want it to grow, right? Yeah. yeah. Can't wait for the perfect conditions. No, no. You know, one of the things that, that I remember most about one of the struggles you went through in the early days of getting online was this feedback that you got. And this is a caution against getting feedback from, from people who don't know what they're talking about. Absolutely. Um, but you know, well-meaning people in your life were saying that you needed to, I don't know, be, they wanted you to be more real. They wanted right. you to be authentic. They were telling this belief that authenticity is the reigning thing. You have to be authentic. And to them, authentic meant being messy, being, um, not put together. Yeah. Not polished, not polished. Yeah. But that's who you really are. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. I, I, you know, like you said at the very beginning, I think if you're not in the arena putting out content then I'm not even going to listen to the feedback, it's the people who are in the arena doing the same thing. That's who I would definitely listen to. Um, but the, yeah, exactly. You have to go with your personality and how you, you know, approach life and you approach creativity and you approach your, you know, projects. And if you are a more polished person, and if that's what you like to put across, then so be it. People would always come, you know, say to me, like, why do you, why is your hair so perfect? And why do you have makeup on? I'm like, well, this is my job. <laughs> I want to be the best version of me that I can be. And, and part of that was bringing across my full authentic self as well. Right. I, I had to, it's, there's a fine line, in my opinion, a fine line between being that authentic self where, you know, life bumps up against you and it's hard and it's challenging. And sometimes you struggle and sometimes you don't want to, you don't feel like working out. You don't feel like putting out content. There's that. And then there's the other side where like show up, right? Like this is your job. This is what you decided you wanted to do. And so part of you has to just, you know, develop grit, develop resilience and show up. And so the, when those two things can come together, it's actually th those posts. If I had that vulnerability, authenticity with a, with a professionalism, those posts do the, the best for me or those videos would for sure. Right. And you get to decide what authentic is for you. You are the one who knows what's authentic. Yeah. Right. You can't let other people put you into this preconceived idea of authenticity. Yeah. Cause then it's not authentic. And I think the more that you practice sharing those parts of yourself, the better you become at them. It might feel awkward at first. You're like, Oh, why am I sharing this? Or what are people going to say? Um, but you really quickly begin to find the audience that are attuned to you and who gravitate to exactly what you're saying. And they will speak out and I invite them to share their experiences. I invite them to message me or whatever, you know? And so that's sort of the way that you cultivate that community and begin to find like-minded people. And this is so important because the like-minded people are who you want to attract. Your ideal customer is going to be someone who resonates with who you really are. Yeah. And that's going to make those relationships even better. And your business is going to grow as a result. So tell me a little bit about what happened when you started to really show up for your business and get visible. What was the impact on your business? Um, you know, I think that it's like, that's two sided, right? So there's all the sort of behind the scenes work of developing and creating. And you wonder really if it's having an impact, you wonder if you're building a community. And one of the things that I put a lot of focus into was building um, like Facebook groups and putting a lot of time and effort and commitment and um, connection. I would message everyone. I would talk to people, I would respond. And as I did that, I really began to see this community like cultivate and and I would sort of like open Pandora's box in their lives so I could explore what their pain point was, you know, and develop that like, know, and trust factor with them. Um, it, and it was a slow progression over time, just like that plant grows and slowly over time. And it, eventually you look back and go, wow, look at this community that I've created. They're, they're able to see me who, for who I am. And yet they trust me as their leader. How did I get there? Like, how did that develop? Right. Uh, but you can look back and see it. And what I realize now it's that it's all those moments that you take where you interact with the, with a client or you, you know, you show that you care that you show that you're real and you, 
you help them with their pain point and, and that builds that trust. You know, it's so interesting that this is coming full circle back to what you said at the beginning, which was you didn't want to do the one-to-one, -one, you wanted to do the one-to-many right. approach. And then as you grew that one-to-many, you had to go back to the roots of making yeah. those one-on-one -on -one connections. Yeah. And, and that's so important in building a community because yeah. it is a relationship that you're growing, right? Yeah, it is. You're right. And, and eventually your voice resonates with the thousands, right? So it's, you know, yes, you're right. I did go back to the connecting one-on-one -on -one and taking really um, a vested interest in the person. They had to feel like I cared. And that was one of the biggest pieces of feedback I, I've, I've received over these last four years is that you are one of us. Um, when you say it's painful in the middle of a workout, like I resonate with that. It's like working out with a friend. I got that thousands of times. Um, like you care about us and what you're teaching us is real life. You're not fake. You're not pretend. And so I would listen to that, but I wouldn't have heard any of that had I not gone down into the comments and responded to comments and, and probed with further questioning. Like you, you have to do that part of the work as well. Yeah, absolutely. It is about building a relationship. And that's what I always say about video. Video is just a way for you to build relationships yeah. with people that you can't meet one-on-one -on -one, yeah. uh, in a coffee shop. So right. as a result of all of this work that you've been doing over the years, showing up for your business, making those extra steps, connecting with people one-on-one, -on -one, doing personal videos for them so they know that you're talking to them, what has it meant for your business? Well, tremendous growth and community. So, you know, one of the things I focused on is diversifying the platform so that I can have broader reach. So I, I definitely have YouTube, uh, TikTok, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, but, and, and building an email list. So part of that, part of having that connection is that, you know, you start to gather all those people together in the same spot, uh, and, which is how you build that sense of community. And, and truly the biggest place that I've done that is through my membership, but also through, you know, free, um, Facebook groups where like-minded people can gather and then, and then I lead them. Yeah. So it's, it's meant growth, um, not only in numbers, but also mon monetarily, you know, I'm able now to completely work online, at, which is fabulous. You know, you can work from home, you can work from Europe <laughs> if you wanted to take a trip. Uh, but it just allows you to dream more because now you're, you know, you're independent that way. Amazing. And of course, we know that the entrepreneurs watching right now need to also include fitness to be balanced entrepreneurs. So um, are you accepting new members in your membership right now? The membership is always, we, we've actually diversified the membership into different tiers now as well, which is another way to, you know, grow uh, and really sort of dial in the needs of each individual there. Because some people really have time and money to grow deeper. So I have like a peak experience, it's called in our uh, tier four membership. Um, but there's just sort of like the level entry membership to in, in, in level one. But yeah, always accepting new members in the membership. Yeah. Awesome. I'm going to include all of that information uh, in the description so people can click through and get to know you, the real you, the real you that shows up on video yeah. and work out with you and have a great time. So um, thank you for that. Now, before I let you go, Tracy, what would be the one tip that you would give uh, to someone who's struggling with visibility? Maybe they're struggling with authenticity or, you know, really um, fighting that fear of getting in front of the camera. What would you say to them about getting visible? Um, like my number one thing is that you just must be consistent. You must, you must put out content every single day um, and, and diversify the platform so that you're not just doing one post a day, you know, in Facebook, but I've got one post a day in Facebook, LinkedIn, TikTok, you know, um, YouTube. I know it sounds like a lot of work, but you can really, I mean, you've probably Valerie can teach this on how to cross pollinate, you know, your content to make sure that, or batch, filming or what have you, but consistency is the key. And because you're going to, you're going to bump up against moments where you just don't feel like it. You're going to bump up against self doubt and different obstacles, why you can't. But when I observe people who don't succeed, it's the ones who don't have the greater resilience to continue. It's staying in the pocket. It's, it's believing in yourself. So increasing that self-efficacy that you have something to offer, that you have something to add. And then it's just putting that out and trusting, trusting the process 
that it's going to land on the ears that are your audience and right for you. You know, I love that. And I love that you're bringing us back to that point of trust in yourself, believe in yourself, and no. don't take guidance from people who've never shown up for themselves no. online. Uh, people who are well-meaning, we love our families, but if they're not entrepreneurs and they don't understand what it takes to get online and get visible, then uh, take advice from people who've been there and done it just That's like right. like you, Tracy. Thank you, dear. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for being here. I really appreciate it. Like I said, I will put Tracy's contact information in the description so you can click through and connect directly with her. She is an open book. I can tell yeah. you that. Don't let the polished exterior fool you. She is absolutely genuine and absolutely exactly as she appears in front of you right now. So reach out to her if you want to connect. And thank you very much for being here on Show Up and Be Seen. Remember, you got into business to help your client solve a problem and you can't do that if you stay hidden. So show up for them, show up for your business, show up for yourself. We'll see you next time.